Hello and welcome back. As part of a special series on Spintronics, we will be discussing the theory of tunneling magneto resistance in this video. In the previous video, we discussed the concept of magneto resistance in multi-layered devices comprised of alternating magnetic and non-magnetic layers. We showed that advancements in Spintronics in the past few decades enable substantial improvements in the tunneling magneto resistance ratio in magnetic tunnel junctions. Devices made from two magnetic layers separated by a thin insulating spacer. In this video, we are going to discuss the basic theory of the tunneling magneto resistance effect and derive two concise results as summarized in the blue and green boxes. First, we derive the current through the tunneling structure and its dependence on the relative orientation of the two magnetization. Then, in the limit of an opaque tunneling barrier, we show that the tunneling magneto resistance, or TMR, is simply related to the spin polarizations of the two ferromagnetic contacts, P1 and P3, as shown. Let's get started. We begin by recapping a few important concepts. First, a magnetic tunnel junction, or MTJ for short, can be found in two configurations depending on the alignment between the two magnetizations. When the two magnetizations are in the antiparallel configuration, the MTJ is in the high resistance state. We denote the resistance in this configuration as RAP. When the two magnetizations are in the parallel configuration, the MTJ is in the low resistance state. We denote the resistance in this configuration as RP. In order to quantify the size of the resistance difference between these two configurations, we define the tunneling magneto resistance ratio, or TMR for short, as shown in the yellow box. The resistance across the MTJ can be computed by basic quantum tunneling formalism for electron transport across the tunneling barrier. The basic idea here is that the tunneling of spin-up and spin-down electrons can be treated as separated transport problems, if the magnetization of the two ferromagnets are collinear. In other words, the spin is assumed to be a good quantum number. If that's the case, the spin-dependent tunneling can be thought of as arising from the different tunneling rates of electrons with different spins. This is illustrated in the wave function and energy diagram shown here. In this scenario, Spin-up and spin-down electrons see different tunneling barriers, such their transmission probabilities will differ, resulting in spin-dependent tunneling. Next, we formalize the description of spin-dependent tunneling. We start by describing a few basic aspects of electron states in typical ferromagnetic metals. The band structure for electrons in BCC iron is shown above. The color bar provides information about the spin states, where red means spin-up states, and blue means spin-down states. As seen above, the bands corresponding to the opposite spin states look alike, except for a rigid shift in energy. The energy splitting of opposite spin bands is due to exchange interaction and is the reason why iron displays magnetism in the first place. In fact, the spin splitting gives rise to a difference in the number of spin-up and spin-down electrons, thus giving rise to a finite magnetization. The spin splitting of electron states in magnetic metals is made more apparent by looking at their density of states, shown here. As is apparent, spin-up states are shifted up in energy in relation to the spin-down states. The spin splitting is the main reason behind spin-dependent tunneling phenomenon in MTJ. In what follows, we shall consider the simplest band model that captures such feature to demonstrate spin-dependent tunneling. Our simplified model corresponds to a free electron model with parabolic bands for each spin configuration, displaced in energy due to the exchange spin splitting. The band structure of our simplified model is shown here. The spin splitting is denoted by delta and only half of the bands with opposite spin states are represented here for simplicity. Because we are considering two spin states, the relevant wave functions for describing tunneling processes must contain information about the two spin components. Hence, we define the spinor shown here. The first component corresponds to the wave function of spin-up electrons, while the second component corresponds to the wave function of spin-down electrons. 
It is important to emphasize that the spin-up and spin-down states are measured in relation to a spin-quantization axis. Here, the spin-quantization axis is the z-axis, meaning that spin-up electrons have a spin pointing along the positive z-direction while spin-down electrons have spins pointing along the negative z-direction. If one wants to consider spin states along a different axis, one must apply a rotation operator to the spinor, as shown. For instance, if the magnetization of the ferromagnetic material points along the z-prime direction, defined by the polar angle, theta, and azimuthal angle, phi, in relation to the original z-axis, the new spinor describing up and down spins along z-prime is obtained by applying the rotation operation, r of theta and phi. Here, we explicitly write the rotation operator in its matrix representation. Applying the rotation operator to the spinor wave function in the unrotated z quantization axis, we get the spinor wave function corresponding to the rotated z prime spin quantization axis. Hence, the spinor wave function for a magnetization along the z prime axis can be explicitly written in terms of the spinor wave function components of the unrotated z axis as shown below. The final spinor components in the rotated axis is therefore a linear combination of the spinor component in the original z axis. To understand how the rotation of the magnetization affects the spin states at the band structure level, we use the simple model for a ferromagnetic metal shown here. The bands are color coded in accordance with the expectation value of the z component of the spin operator. The z axis is defined below. The spins filling up the bands are also shown. When the magnetization is along the z direction, we only have spin states along z and minus z. The bands are either completely blue or completely red, corresponding to the spin down and spin up configurations. When we rotate the magnetization, the band structure does not change. Only the direction of the spin states associated with each band. This is shown next. Here. The magnetization has been rotated towards the y direction. Consequently, the spin states of the two bands have also been rotated. Because there's no z component of the spin states in each individual band, the expectation value of the spin z operator is zero. Therefore, the bands turn green. Finally, if we further rotate the magnetization towards the minus z direction, the spin states of the two bands independently acquire a non-vanishing z component. Hence, the expectation value of the z spin operator is finite, and the bands acquire blue and red colors again. Because the new spin quantization axis is minus z, the color scheme is opposite to that when the magnetization was along the plus z direction. In other words, the switching of the magnetization between opposite directions will only flip the spin states associated with the bands but the band structure will remain invariant. This is true if we are neglecting the effects of spin-orbit interaction in our simplified model. If spin-orbit interaction is relevant, the band structure will also change with the rotation of magnetization. We are now ready to investigate tunneling of spin-polarized states across a tunneling barrier. The device structure we have in mind for the MTJ is the well-known iron, magnesium oxide, iron multilayers as shown. Here, the magnesium oxide layer is an insulator with an electronic gap of approximately 5 electron volts. An in-depth discussion of this realistic MTJ will be deferred to an upcoming video. For now, we shall only focus on the toy model counterpart of this device with the intent of only capturing the fundamental features. To simulate the basic features of spin transport across the MTJ device, we assume the band diagram shown in the lower figure. The fundamental assumption of our tunnel junction model is that the electron states in both ferromagnetic contacts as well as the insulating spacer are described by the free spinor model presented earlier. The insulating barrier has a finite thickness d, and we assume its left interface is at x equals 0 while its right interface is at x equals d in the band diagram as shown. Because the insulator is not magnetic, the spin splitting is zero. As far as the ferromagnetic contacts are concerned, we assume that their spin splitting are the same, but that their magnetizations are misaligned in general. To this end, 
we assume that the magnetization of the left ferromagnetic electrode is aligned with the z-axis while the magnetization of the right electrode is misaligned by the angle theta, as shown in the figure. The tunneling rates are then obtained by considering the scattering of electron states and their transmission probabilities. The spinor wave functions for electrons in regions 1, 2 and 3 are summarized in the green boxes. According to the potential profile diagram, region 1 corresponds to the left ferromagnetic electrode, region 2 corresponds to the insulator and region 3 corresponds to the right ferromagnetic electrode. The spinor wave function for region 1 is a superposition of right propagating incident states and left propagating reflected states. The spinor wave function for region 2 contains information about the evanescent states inside the barrier. These states decay exponentially from the interface with a decay length given in terms of a complex wave vector. The spinor wave function for region 3 corresponds to the transmitted states. The wave vectors in each regions are also explicitly presented here. The physical picture in the scattering process is as follows. Electrons are injected from the left ferromagnetic contact. The injected electrons partially transmit through the barrier to the right contact and partially reflect back to the left contact. The transmission probability is obtained by looking at the amplitude of the transmitted wave functions. Note that the spinor wave function for electrons in the right contact considers the magnetization misalignment angle through the rotation matrix are discussed previously. The coefficients of the wave functions provide information about the reflection and transmission probabilities. The coefficients are up and down are the reflection amplitudes for the two spin channels, while the coefficients C up and down are the transmission amplitudes. To determine these amplitudes, we apply boundary conditions to connect the solutions at the interfaces. The boundary condition for the wave functions are summarized here. They ensure the continuity for the wave functions of spin up and spin down states at both interfaces, as well as the continuity of the derivatives of the wave functions of spin up and spin down states at both interfaces. By employing such conditions, all coefficients can be obtained. In particular, we are interested in obtaining the coefficients C up and C down, which refers to the transmission amplitudes for both spin channels. From the complete knowledge of the full transmitted wave function, the tunneling current passing through the MTJ can be calculated. We list here all the coefficients after solving for the boundary conditions. They can all be expressed in terms of the wave vectors of both spin configurations in the electrodes and in the tunneling barrier, as well as the magnetization misalignment angle and the tunneling barrier thickness. These coefficients were first derived by Slonczewski in his seminal 1989 paper, which we leave here as a reference. Now, with all coefficients in hands, we can compute the total tunneling current across the magnetic tunnel junction. Here, we show explicitly the final result. The current density can be computed from the following textbook expression, where its dependence on the transmitted wave function is made explicit. Substituting the final form of the transmitted wave function, we obtain the following as shown, where the coefficients g1 and g3 depend on the wave vectors of electron states in both ferromagnetic contacts as well as the magnitude of the complex wave vector of electrons in the tunneling barrier. Note that all angular dependence on the final current density is confined to a single cosine factor. The quantities P1 and P3 multiplying the cosine factor are refereed to as the tunneling spin polarizations of ferromagnetic electrodes in regions 1 and 3. Hence, the tunneling spin polarization are crucial for the description of the angular dependence of the MTJ resistance. In fact, if these polarization are zero, there will be no difference between the currents in the parallel or anti-parallel configuration and the tunneling magneto-resistance ratio would be zero. To intuitively understand why P1 and P3 are called spin polarizations, let's take the high barrier limit. In the large barrier limit, we expect that the properties of the system would be related to the properties of the isolated contacts only. The high barrier approximation is mathematically captured by letting kappa, 
the inverse of the wave function penetration length inside the insulator, be larger than any wave vector in the problem. In this limit, the tunneling spin polarization is as shown. Note that for a three-dimensional free electron model, the density of states is proportional to the wave vector. This is due to the fact that the density of states is related to the root of the energy, while the energy has a quadratic relation with wave vector. Hence, the tunneling spin polarization in the high barrier approximation can be solely expressed in terms of the density of states of spin up and spin down channels. But this is precisely the polarization of an isolated contact given in terms of the density of states of different spin channels. Thus, to call P1 and P3 polarization is justified here. The most general expression of the tunneling spin polarization in the tunneling current accounts for the coupling between the electron wave function of both contacts and, therefore, is a property of the junction, and not of isolated contacts. Thus, the term tunneling spin polarization becomes more appropriate. Now, we proceed with the description of spin polarized transport across the MTJ. We can define the tunneling current passing through the MTJ in the parallel and in the anti-parallel configuration by setting the misalignment angle to 0 degree and 180 degrees, respectively. Finally, the tunneling magnetoresistance ratio, TMR, can be written explicitly in the thick barrier approximation, where only contributions around the zero transverse momentum states are relevant. Remarkably, the TMR only depends on the tunneling spin polarizations P1 and P3, as explicitly shown. This result was shown for the first time in 1975 by Joliere, which first introduced the concept of tunneling magnetoresistance in MTJs. We explicitly show the angular dependence of the tunneling current. Different curves correspond to MTJs with distinct tunneling spin polarization products. As is apparent, the charge current reaches a minimum when the misalignment angle between the two magnetizations is 180 degrees. That is, in the anti-parallel configuration. Therefore, the MTJ is in a high resistance state in the anti-parallel configuration. The maximum of the charge current is obtained when the misalignment angle between the magnetizations is 0 degrees. That is, in the parallel configuration the MTJ is in a low resistance state. The plot shows that the maximum difference between these two configurations is obtained when the product of the tunneling spin polarizations is close to 1. Therefore, the model predicts that largest tunneling magnetoresistance ratio should be attained at almost ideal tunneling spin polarizations. This concludes our discussion on the basics of tunneling magnetoresistance effect in magnetic tunnel junctions. In the next video, we are going to briefly discuss the TMR in a realistic system. The magnesium oxide-based MTJ. Stay tuned, and subscribe, so you will be notified of our future episodes.